I'd like to talk to you about improvised weapons. One of the things we recommend you do is if you can, acquire a better weapon, get a better weapon. What makes something a better weapon? Well, it's harder than your fists or feet. It gives you longer reach, or it has a sharp edge or a point on it, or it allows you to create a distraction so that you can close the gap with the person that's attacking you, or create a distraction so you can slam a door in your face and get away from it. So I'm going to go through some common objects that you might have in your car, you might have in your office, they might be in your bathroom, your kitchen, they might be in your backpack. Simplest thing, almost everybody's got a pen or pencil. You can stab with a pen or pencil. If you're going to stab, you can stab with a screwdriver from a toolbox if one happens to be around. You can bang them with the blunt end of the screwdriver. You can stab them or squat them with a spatula from the kitchen. You won't make a hole in them, but you can make a knot on them. You can smack them with it because it, it gives you more reach. You can use a coffee mug. You can smash the coffee mug on the nose, the bullseye on the face. You can smash them in the nose, the bullseye on the face with a salt and pepper shaker. You can stick a VCR tape, bang, in the throat. You can use a CD. It's got a sharp edge. Push a little more reach, something a little harder than your fingernails. A stapler from your desk. I'm not going to give the application of every one of these things because, again, they're either a striking implement with a harder surface than your hand, they're a stabbing or cutting instrument, possibly with more reach. You can have a can of soda in your hand. If the can of soda is half full, cover the hole, bang, again, go for the bullseye, go for the nose or the throat. Water bottle, same thing. You may not going to knock them out with a water bottle, but you're going to get their head back. You're going to create time. You may bring the base forward so you can, I mean, bring the base and the hips forward so you can start chopping them down at the legs. If you're in the house, it could be a broom. You've got lots of reach with a broom. You've got the handle to use for a jab. You've got the end for a cross. You can hook. You can use it as if you were punching at them. A yardstick, same idea. It'll probably break when you swat them, but it's going to give you a split second or two of stinging impact or distraction on them so that you've got a chance again to close with them. You can use a dictionary, a book, a paperback. Again, slam in the throat, slam in the nose, slap them alongside the ear of the temple with the sharp ends. Your TV remote, same thing, hard plastic, it may shatter when you hit them, but better that it shatters than your hand, and you've got a little more reach, and you've got an impact surface to hit with. You've got things that you may actually be carrying. An umbrella, the same thing. The umbrella works as a blunt object to hit them with. The umbrella also works just plain open. If I sail the umbrella, whew, you can't see me. The camera can't see me, neither can the bad guy so that you can use an umbrella as a distraction, either to escape or to come in behind the umbrella that's sailing at them in order to hit them, in order to strike A to the face, B to the base. Any other distractions, I'm not going to throw it, but I can whip a jacket, a sweater, a purse on a strap, anything that gives you length that you can swing into their face to get them to back off. Same thing if a belt, if you have time to get the belt out. If they're on top of you, you're not going to be trying to drag your belt out. But clearly, I've got a sharp metal buckle on the end of a piece of cloth. I've also got something I can wrap around somebody's neck or wrap around an arm to pull them off balance. In terms of distractions, I might be wearing a hat. If I have a hat, I can use the hat the same way as the umbrella, the same way as a swinging piece of cloth. I can say, hey, and bam, the hat goes in the face. Or I can take the hat off, and I want to throw it out as swirl a hat, throw it to him for him to catch it. They're either going to duck it or catch it. Either way, they've been distracted for what I'm doing next, which is I'm coming in behind that object to do a strike to the face and then go to work on the base. Talking about things you can throw. A handful of change. A handful of change. Coins. Wham! In their face. Again, you're not going to knock anybody out with some pennies from the piggy bank, but you are going to distract them and keep them from coming after you. If you happen to be carrying a walking stick. Yes.
this letter. Talking about other things you can toss. I'll just throw them up in the air, but I've got coins. If I throw coins in their face, I'm going to get a distraction. You're not going to knock someone out with pennies from your piggy bank, but you are going to distract them. And you're probably going to bring your face back. If you're coming in behind that, you've got a possibility to strike at the face. You've got a good possibility to just shin kick right there. You've driven them back. They're probably off balance. It's a good time to carry out the second half of the attack, chop them down at the base. Talking about things you can hit them with, you might be carrying a cane. A cane, especially any kind of good solid wooden cane or walking stick, difference between a cane and a walking stick. The cane has a handle or a hook at the top. The walking stick just has a knob. But either one of them can be used to jab, to cross, to hook, and then taken up baseball fashion. The first strikes were to the torso or the face, and blam, blam, down at the shins, down at the lower legs. Chop them down from the bottom of the tree. You can take a magazine or a newspaper. You could just slap them with it. That doesn't do much. If you have time while you're talking to them and you say, look, I don't want any trouble, you roll this up, you've made a tube out of it. Paper's made out of trees. It's ground up wood. Once you roll it back, you've turned it back into its original object. Somebody says, well, you can't do much of anything with a magazine. And I say, yes, I can. If I put that on the bullseye in your face, or if I drive that into your solar plexus, or I drive it into your groin, I've done the same thing with this rolled up magazine. Now, clearly much shorter, but I've done the same thing as if I had this stick to poke you with. So that we, and again, you can think of other improvised weapons. We're not trying to give you a catalog of everything. One of the most common, one of the common improvised weapons that you can use are your keys. Don't do anything fancy with them. Hold them in your hand just like you were going to put them in a lock. Because when you're finished using it as an improvised weapon, you may want to get in your house, slam the door, and call the police. You may want to get in your car and drive off and leave the scene. The key can be used to poke eyes, throat. The key can be used to slash. It's got a sharp edge on it. You can slash with your keys. You can poke and slash. It's a great improvised weapon. You can defend yourself with a credit card. You can use the edge of it to slice. Again, anything that you can use to make your hands harder, your reach longer, or that has a sharp edge on it or a point on it, or that can be thrown as a distraction. Either they duck it or they catch it, and you either escape in that split second or you come forward and engage them, striking to the face, striking to the base to chop them down. We haven't in any way covered everything that could be used as an improvised weapon. The word is improvised. You need to look at your surroundings and say, when I'm being attacked, what can I use as a weapon? And it's up to you to think of those things.